Rose, have a seat. Woo! <laughs> I'm going to uh, need to file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Uh, Ms. Bayonne, New Jersey, just ain't supporting my lifestyle. Um, and what about those diamonds and that jewelry? Oh, <laughs> family heirlooms worth about $50,000. So, um, Rose, I have to tell you... Uh, oh, hold on a second. My mechanic's supposed to call me. I'm getting fire and new lights put on my new Benz. <laughs> a Benz? A Mercedes Benz? Is it in your name? Uh, it was a gift from my ex. <laughs> oh, um, I see. And I'm going to need to be able to keep my gold card. <laughs> you don't get to pick and choose which creditors you get to list. But then I'd, I'd be broke. I'd have to get a job. Oh, I, I need a life. It's midnight. I have to get to the studio. From Philadelphia, it's the only original late night television show in town. Get ready for Raw Reality with Gail Casper. Welcome everyone, welcome, welcome. Yeah, it's great to have you with us. Thanks for being here. Woo! Thank you everyone, thank you. Welcome to Raw Reality. Life's just plain crazy. Justin Bieber and Lindsay Lohan's outrageous behavior. Winona Ryder shoplifting. And we love shows like Honey Boo Boo and Duck Dynasty. What? I have come to the conclusion that what we really love is our baggage. Point in case. When Mariah Carey was on London's Good Morning television show, host Kate Garraway said she had two people lower her onto the couch. Was this to prevent her dress from getting crushed? Or was it just a bad case of hemorrhoids? She endorses perfume and nail polish. Why not Preparation H? She also had one person walk in front of her backwards constantly in case she fell over. How many guys do you think apply for that job? Hey, Mariah, in case you fall, I'll catch you. Oh, wait, this is Mariah. I'll catch you. We all have baggage, yet we don't want to deal with other people's baggage. Oksana Grigoriva didn't want Mel Gibson's baggage, but then again, she did put up with it for a while. Some people thrive off of the excitement of other people's baggage. Inquiring minds want to know. I'm one of them. How many of us have lost our baggage? Well, guess what, folks? You haven't lost anything. It just looks so much like other people's baggage that you can't tell it apart. It's like trying to find Waldo at a 4th of July barbecue. Not going to happen. And then there are people who have no idea that they have any baggage. You know who I'm talking about. Don't be shy. Yeah. That's right. Randy Travis. He was arrested for drunk driving. That's not the baggage part. He was completely naked. Thank God I don't have any issues. Our correspondent Monique had a chance to ask a few celebrities about their emotional baggage. Let's see what happened. Sharon Osbourne, talk to me about emotional baggage. This is exciting. It's all about titties and bums. Ooh, this is getting good. My implants need to be removed. They're like water bags on my chest. I want to have them made into snow globes for my Aussie. Crazy, but that's how it goes. Sharon, have your people come. My people will do lunch. Oh. 
there's Rosie Perez. Rosie, Rosie, you talked in your book about emotional baggage and your attitude. What? You got the story wrong. I don't have an attitude. Uh, I'm sorry. I was, I was just kidding. <laughs> I'm not upset. Oh, for a minute there, I was afraid to bring up J-Lo. Where is she? I'll take a one. Without me, she'd be nothing but Jenny from the block for the big ass. Oh, my. I was just kidding again. Don't worry. I'm not going to throw a chicken wing at you. In summary, Charlie Sheen is totally normal. So I'm going to need some help figuring out this whole baggage thing. We've got some great guests with us tonight. I'm really excited. We're going to talk to the co-host of Spike TV's new show, Frankenfood. You know him as Tony Luke Jr. He's here with us tonight. And also with us are comedians Jake Matera and Anton Schuford. We've got a great show coming up. Don't go anywhere. Coming up, Tony Luke Jr. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let's welcome our first guest. He's done it all. He's been a part of TV, movies, music, and food. He's the co-host of Spike TV's Frankenfood. He's the man behind the famous Tony Luke sandwich. The one and only, Tony Luke Jr. Yeah. Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh. Yeah. Man, how are you? I'm good. I'm tired. I've been traveling like crazy, but it's, it's great. Oh, good. So it's great to be home. How are the boys doing? Boys are good. Tony's good. Michael's good. Joey's good. I got grandkids now. Yeah. Showing my age. Oh Everything my God. And you look fantastic. Well, thank you. 75 this week. Really? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I remember working with Tony. Uh, uh, Philadelphia Visitors Channel. We did a shoot. Ooh. Tony Luke's. Many moons ago. Oh, they left me with one sandwich. They went back to shoot for about 30 seconds. And they came back out, and I just had like drool of a. I think we had to make a couple face. sandwiches that day, if my memory serves me correctly. <gasps> uh, that's exactly true. That's exactly <laughs> true. So, um, I asked you to bring some baggage with you for the show. Did you leave it out back? Oh, emotional bag. Yeah, yeah. Did you bring it with you? I got an 18-wheeler outside with mine. I did bring. Oh. I do. I have it. Oh, great. <laughs> I don't carry much baggage, Gail. Is this it? That's it. It's all is I got. It? This is not even angry baggage. This is happy baggage. I'm a very centered, centered individual. And I, I guess this centered is... Centered with the universe. And I guess this is why we brought you on, because you can help us deal with the rest of emotional baggage. I will absolutely try. All right, well, do you mind if I move it? Because I can see where it would be in the way. Yeah, that's, you know, that's taking a lot of space on the desk. You may want to put it somewhere safe. Uh, I'm just going to keep it here, so this way you can take it with you before as you go. As long as I can see my baggage, I'm happy. <laughs> there you go. All right, so tell us, Frankenfood. Oh, my Sunday God. Sunday night, 10 p.m., Spike TV. The show is crazy. It's uh, uh, the host, Josh Capon, and myself mm -hmm. uh, do this insane show on Spike TV. It is, it is comedy. It is food. It is creativity, inventive. Some of the dishes That's are absolutely great. insane. Yeah. And some of the people are more crazy than the actual than dishes the actual are. Food. So have you always loved Abbey Normal Food? I have loved Abbey Normal Food, yes. I'm not, you know, like uh, Andrew Zimmer, Zimmerman kind of crazy food guy, but I like combinations. I love any show that gets people into the kitchen. Yeah. The show puts fun back in food. Yeah. You know, you, you watch these food shows and they're great. I watch them. I'm addicted to them. But, you know, you're afraid to go in the kitchen. You follow these recipes. I didn't do this right. I left that out. You know, we're saying go in the kitchen, throw everything in there. If it's great, you hit a home run. If it's not, yeah. spit it out, start again. And Sunday night, they had that giant, because I saw it, it was fantastic. Sunday, giant burrito. What the heck was Let that thing? Let me tell you something about the giant burrito. The odor of that thing was so bad that I was gagging from the time he wheeled it in. When I ate that thing, I have to tell you, it was, it lasted two seconds and right in the spitter bucket, which is my best friend on the show. Oh, that's sad. The spitter bucket <laughs> is my favorite, my favorite character on the show. What is your favorite Abbey Normal food? Franken food, as you would call it, I call it Abbey Normal. Uh, you know what? It, it, it varies. There were some great, great, great uh, dishes. I think one of my favorites was a thing called a Mary Popper. 
and it was a jalapeno stuffed with mac and cheese, but it was encrusted in Cheez-Its. And it was absolutely delicious. Wow, wow. And I know you lost 125 pounds. Huge, that's phenomenal, right? That's Thank great, you. yeah. You. Did you do that with Abby Normal food? Because if you did, we want to know what that Franken food was. No, I did it with Abby Normal running on the treadmill like a <laughs> lunatic. <laughs> So it was There's a no routine. normal way out of losing the weight. <laughs> you just have to do it one specific way. I actually, little tidbit, I put on over 25 pounds doing the show. You're kidding me. Well, we eat so much food. You guys only see, you know, four or five contestants. There were 40 or 50 contestants each show okay. that we have to weed through. And you're taking two and three bites, and it's not two and three bites of grilled salmon. Yeah, you yeah, know, it's yeah, deep yeah. fried, you know, apple pie, and it's like, you know, each bite is 10,000 calories. I was running three miles in the morning oh my God. and a mile at night and gaining three pounds a week. Well, we've got some Franken food for you to try. So uh, uh, I'm not trying anything without a spitter bucket. Do I have a Franken food spitter bucket? Well, that's a big assumption, just because it's me in the kitchen. <laughs> Right, I'll go without the spitter I bucket mean, and hope that we're okay. I know, because I, honestly, like my idea of a colander is some guy that lives in New York on the Upper East Side. So that's <laughs> like, it's, that's, that's what I know about a kitchen. But we do need you to sign off on this release. I, I'm sorry, there were only two incidents, two. I mean, one was like garlic bread that caught on fire. It's just if you get sick or dead. Uh, you know what, here, you I'm, okay. to, I'm gonna sign it. Here, let me sign it. <laughs> Abby Normal. <laughs> Now you're covered. There you go. All right. Here, now I'm going to ask you to guess what Do the ingredients are. Do I have to close my eyes? No, but I'm going to ask you to guess what the ingredients are in this. All right. Let's see. It is I, all freshly made. I'm going to tell you exactly what this is. This is Rice Krispies with fluff, marshmallow yeah, I fluff. I already done that. That's like boring. Hold on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> He's afraid. Mmm. I got an mmm! I got an mmm! Wow, what is that? That's delicious. Is it cream? It's whipped cream. Now, here are the ingredients exactly. We've got a half a cup of Rice Krispies, half a cup of whipped cream, two tablespoons of WD-40. That's it. Well, the WD-40 actually <laughs> makes it a Franken food. Don't try this at the home. The Rice Krispies and the cream would not technically qualify as a Franken food. Really? Yeah, Just because it's different? It's two or more unexpected ingredients that come together and make a fabulous dish or a horrible miss. So let's see what the next one is. Well, I, I already failed. <laughs> well, let me see. I don't know. What is this? I already failed. I'll let All you right. try. Yeah, try it first. Is this liver? This is liver. Is it cow's brain? No, no. Is no. it sweetbreads? No. Is it a cookie? I am so afraid of saying the wrong thing right now. I'm so afraid right, of saying on. the wrong Wait thing. Wait a minute. All right, let me tell I have to dip this? Yes. Well, it's better if you dip it. It's better if you dip it. That's yeah. what I've always heard. All right. <laughs> I could deal with this. Yeah. All right. So we have sour cream? Actually, that's chicken strips. No, this is sour cream, yes? That is a Greek yogurt. Oh, Coconut, Greek yogurt. Coconut Greek yogurt. You've got uh, Cracker Jack chicken. You take the Cracker Jacks, you mash them, you put honey on the outside of the chicken, you roll it. Okay, this is a Franken food. Yeah! Go. I need a round this, of applause, this please. This is a Franken food. And not only is it a Franken food, it's a good Franken food, which we call a Franken pass. Not a Franken fail, a Franken pass. Well, speaking of pass or fail, you're going to hang out with us, right? Because we have pass or fail with Gail coming up. You're not going anywhere. Where am I going? I'm right here. I'm eating Franken Excellent. food. I'm having a great time. Tony Luke Jr., everybody. We'll be right back with pass or fail with Gail and the Odd Squad. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with the Odd Squad. Tony Luke Jr., and appearing at Finnegan's Wake on July 25th, comedian Jake Matera, and appearing at the Comedy Stop Tropicana, July 21st through the 27th, comedian Anton Schufert. Now, during the break, I asked these guys to rate a few emotional issues and what specifically they would not be willing to live with if they were dating somebody. Now, these issues come directly from Jerry Springer's show, um, Baggage. So, uh, have you guys ever seen that show? 
Yeah, yeah sure. you have. Okay, good, yeah. good. So uh, just to give uh, all of you just a quick heads up as to some of the things that we're looking at. Has a webcam in their bathroom? Would you date somebody that does? Doesn't believe in foreplay. Um, was in prison for a minor crime, never said I love you and never will. Uh, Anton, what are the few that you picked out that you said absolutely no way? Well, I wouldn't sleep with a woman who had rats in her house. And uh, I definitely don't want to be with a woman who's had a threesome with one of my best friends. Because uh, I like to think of my woman with better moral values than me and me with better moral values than my friends. So the three coming together in that way, my whole world would implode. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> well, I, I don't know, I've slept with a few rats, so um, I, I guess it's all how you classify it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome, I guess. Jake, how about you? Uh, I would definitely uh, not sleep with somebody who texts during sex. Yeah, but what if they were trying to text you in instructions? And well, then in that case, I'd welcome it. I mean, if like the last thing I would want is somebody live tweeting the whole horrible experience they're about to have with me. It'd probably be about four texts long or four tweets long. It would be terrible. Well, you could, you could end it quickly. You know, they couldn't yeah. do that all. You know, Snapchat. I would do a Snapchat. <laughs> I mean, it would last 10 seconds. Five seconds longer than me. <laughs> Oh my. oh my god. All right, what was your other <laughs> one? On what was your other one? Oh, uh, definitely, uh, I wouldn't uh, date anybody who's been to 32 Donny Osmond concerts because there's clearly like a incest thing happening. Like, I'd watch the way they kiss their siblings. No All way. right, so what you're telling me is you're definitely not a little bit country <laughs> and not a little bit rock and roll. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Tony, how about yourself? Uh, all of the above, except for being inducted by aliens, because I think that would make great pillow talk. Yeah. Okay, well, well let's take a look at some of these other ones that we have here. Um, you mentioned the 32 Donnie, I like Donny Osmond, I gotta well. tell you. Um, where's adult diapers? It depends. Wow. When does, oh what? Yeah. When does it depend? Wow, I got it. Wow. It depends, get it? Oh, no, but I mean, is it laziness? Is there an issue? Is there something yeah. need to be, that needs to be resolved? Uh, buys panties at the 99 cent store? Not a problem. Right. No, because you'll nope. whip those off, right? That's not even going to, you don't even care about that. Yeah. Threesome with the best friends, Anton, you mentioned I, that. Wow. Uh, used cocaine frequently in the past? I can't believe you guys it, didn't put that at the top of your list. It could work in your favor in the bedroom, yes. but outside that, you know. I'm, I'm not here to hit a judge. <laughs> oh, it's bad. Yeah. That's bad. Someone's used cocaine in the past. They turn their life around. <laughs> you hope. That they turn their life around? Seriously, I can deal with cocaine and not adult diapers, okay? <laughs> all right, guys, this leads us right into pass or fail with Gail. All right, so this is where we take a real life scenario. You guys graded with a pass or fail. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, ready. Don't yeah. forget, I will be tweeting with you during the show. Let's take a look at our first scenario. Northern Ireland's Rory McElroy broke off his wedding with Carolyn Wozniacki because she was hurting his golf game. And you know what? I have to, I have to start this off. I mean, that's his story and he's sticking to it, right? Um, I gotta give him a fail, are you kidding me? That's not the truth. He either didn't love her or he doesn't love the golf game. One of them, that's the issue. He's gotta turn his story around. That's my story. Yeah, I'll go, Tony? I, it's a, he could've came out with a better one than that. So I'm giving him a fail on lack of imagination. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna give him a pass. You shouldn't do anything to hurt your golf game. So, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, um, yeah, pass, that's a legitimate reason. I want to give him a pass as well because he's able to prioritize, you know? He put his clubs before becoming hubs. I, that, I can't even believe that. Prioritize. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Golf ahead of love. <laughs> There's something wrong with that picture. Golf is love. Yeah. <gasps> oh my God. All right, let's take a look at the next one. We have this picture here of Rihanna at the 2014 Fashion Awards wearing a see-through dress. Is this her emotional baggage? Anton, what do you think, pass or fail? I'm gonna go with pass, and I wanna say, first of all, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know if this is an emotional baggage. I'm giving her a pass because she showed up naked. So. <laughs> Jake, how about you? I'm gonna go with pass as well because, I mean, good for her, you know? She's just showing women everywhere out there that the bruises from Chris Brown are Still there. Ow! Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Nice. Wow. Still there. That is the most ah, romantic That is, yeah. <laughs> Tony, I'm what do you got for us? I'm going because she's just hot. Yeah. So, you know, it works for me. And, and I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to pass it. I have a rule, A, B, N. Yeah. Always be nice and always be naked. There you go. I never thought it would apply to public, 
<laughs> but you know, um, there you go. I have just got to go with I've it. I've just gained so much respect for you <laughs> in two seconds. Yeah. Wardrobe change. <laughs> All right, real quick on this last one. Mick Jagger fathered a child with a Brazilian woman. His wife, Jerry Hall, said, okay, we're done, divorce, that's it. Mick claimed that their marriage never happened in Bali. Pass or fail? Jake, start us off. I'm going with pass because Jerry needs to learn that sometimes in life you can't always get what you want. Ooh. But if you try sometimes, <laughs> you get what you need. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with a, the rare double pass. I'm going to give Mick Jagger a pass for using the technicality to get out of a wedding, a marriage, okay? <laughs> and I'm gonna give Jerry a pass because she still gained $16 million and she don't have to put divorcee <laughs> on her, you know, Match.com profile. That's right. <laughs> and I love that one. Tony, give me real quick. Genius. <laughs> Genius and that's it. All right, now that we have solved the world of emotional baggage, because I'm not even gonna vote on this, it's a fail, fail. We're gonna take a break and don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I'm back. I'm back with Tony Lee Jr., co-host of Spike TV's Frank and Food. He is sitting here on this really hot bike. Anybody that's on this bike is going to look hot. What's going on with the chopper? Oh, my God. We're raffling this off for charity. Uh, this is a great-looking bike. It's really original. Black and red, our colors. I love Ooh. this thing. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, benefits the Jesu school, mm -hmm. right, for the economically margina marginalized in Philadelphia, right? Yeah, it's a, great, it's, a, it's a great cause. It's a great charity. It's also in connection with the Jungo. Okay. And uh, the bike is made by Johnny Max Chopper House. So what makes it customized? Uh, it's a bobber. Uh, you know, a lot of choppers are out there, but I wanted to do a bobber. And I think bobbers are just so cool and they're so retro. You know, a bobber was created by lightening the bike. Okay. To ride it more, to get more speed out of it, make more, you know, make it more um, quicker on turns and maneuverability. So what they normally do is they take the front fender off and then they kind of bob the back fender. So how do we, uh, how do we get this thing? Well, you can get it in three places. You can either get it at Tony Luke's, the original store on Front and Oregon. Okay. You can get it at TonyLukes.com online or JohnnyMaxChopperHouse.com online also. Beautiful. Great cause, Tony. Oh my God, yeah. And thanks so much for being with us. Good luck in the show. Thank you. Tony Luke Jr., everybody. Thank you to all of our guests, comedians Anton Shuford, Jake Matera, our sponsor, the Philadelphia Visitors Channel. We'll see you next week, everybody.